If you have your Bibles, can you get them out so we can take a look together what the Bible has to say? Today I'd like to talk about Daniel explains Nebuchadnezzar's dream. If you have your Bible, can you open it to Daniel chapter 2? Daniel's the book right after Ezekiel. It's in your Old Testament towards the back half. And there's a pretty thick book called Ezekiel. If you find that, it's right after that we have Daniel. And we're going to Daniel chapter 2 and we're going to verse 31. It says, You, O king, were watching, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose splendor was excellent, stood before you, and its form was awesome. This image's head was of fine gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. You watched while a stone was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay, and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like chaff from the summer threshing floor. floors. The wind carried them away so that no trace of them was found, and the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream. Now we will tell the interpretation of it before the king. Let me just stop there for a second because Daniel is telling King Nebuchadnezzar what he dreamed. And if you go all the way to verse 25, in the same chapter, chapter 2, verse 25, it talks about how Daniel, uh, then Ariel quickly brought Daniel before the king and said thus to him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah who will make known to the king the interpretation. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Bethsalzar, are you able to make known to me the dream which I have seen in its interpretation? Verse 27 says, Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded, the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, and the soothsayers cannot declare to the king. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. Your dream and the visions of your head upon your bed were these. And Daniel explains, so King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. He wanted to know the meaning. He couldn't remember the dream, so he asked all these people to... Uh, tell him the dream. And they were all saying it's impossible. But Daniel comes along and says, God himself can tell you what your dream means. So not only did God tell Daniel uh, what Nebuchadnezzar dreamed, he told him exactly what it meant. And so we just read uh, the part that Daniel explained what the dream was about. And he had dreamed of a big statue. And we see that in verse 31, that he was watching a great image, which was like a great big statue, stood before Nebuchadnezzar, and it was an awesome looking statue. And it talks about how the head was of fine gold, its chest was of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, and its leg of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. This image is going down in quality. So the image is very beautiful up at the top, and it, little by little it's getting to be, if you want to say, less valuable materials that are being used. And it goes on to say, verse 34, how there was a stone that was cut out without hands, which struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. So the statue ended up being broken apart by this big rock that came along and hit, hit in its feet. And we can see that that's where Daniel came. And we're at 36 now where it says, this is the dream. Now we will tell the interpretation of it before the king. Daniel's about to tell King Nebuchadnezzar the interpretation. Not only did he was able to tell him the, the, what he actually dreamed, which would be impossible by himself, but he's actually going to explain the meaning to King Nebuchadnezzar. So let's take a look at what the meaning is. You, verse 37, you, O king, are a king of kings, for the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And wherever the children of men dwell, or the beasts of the field and the birds of the heaven, he has given them into your hand and has made you ruler over all. You are this head of gold. But after you shall rise another kingdom inferior to yours, then another, a third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, and as much as iron breaks in pieces and shatters everything. And like iron that crushes, that kingdom will break in pieces and crush all the others. Whereas you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. Yet the strength of the iron shall be in it, just as you saw the iron mixed with ceramic clay. And as the toes of the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. As you saw iron mixed with ceramic clay, they will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not adhere to one another just as iron does not mix with clay. 
And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Inasmuch as you saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has made known to the king what will come to pass after this. The dream is certain, and its interpretation is sure. So Daniel explains exactly what the dream meant to Nebuchadnezzar, and not only does he explain it in, in the last verse there that we read in verse 45, he says at the end, the dream is certain and its interpretation is sure. There was no doubt what Daniel was saying was going to happen. Now, this was still future in Babylon. At this time, the powerful king was named Nebuchadnezzar, and they were the world power at this time. They they had conquered their own, all the known area in their area, and they basically were the kingdom that all the other world powers would look up to. And it was quite the kingdom. And we go back to verse 37. It says that, well, that's what it's saying. You, O king, are a king of kings, for the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And verse 38, that he rules over everything. And verse 39, but after you. Oh, by the way, in verse 38, it says, you are this head of gold. So King Nebuchadnezzar in the, the kingdom of Babylon was the head of gold of the statue. So the statue had a head of gold, and we talked about the silver, bronze, and, and the iron, and then the iron mixed with clay. He was the head of gold, and he was the, if you want to say, the top quality uh, item. And verse 39 says, But after you shall arise another kingdom inferior to yours, then another kingdom. Well, we're going to stop there, because in verse 39, the kingdom that would arise after Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. It's actually talked about in Daniel in a different chapter, and we can go over to Daniel chapter 5. So if you hold your place, we will come back to Daniel chapter 2. But in Daniel chapter 5, we're going to look at verse 28, and it says, Perez, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Medes and Persians. And we can take a look at uh, the whole chapter, and it talks about how Babylon was going to fall that night and the kingdom that was going to come was the Medes and the Persians. And that's exactly what happened. This was still future when Daniel told this to the kings. But this happened exactly how it is. And it's in our history books now. Not just the Bible. We can take a look at history and see that the world kingdom at the time of Daniel was the Babylonians. And that after them came the Medes and the Persians. And that one, one kingdom was stronger than the other. The Persians were a little bit stronger than the Medes, but they worked together and they were a world power at that time. Now let's go back to Daniel chapter 2 and we're at verse 39. And then it talks about a third kingdom. Then another, a third kingdom of bronze. So you see that the Medes and the Persian were the silver part. So Nebuchadnezzar is the gold. The Medes and the Persian are the silver part. And then we've got verse 39, the second part. This is, then another, a third kingdom of bronze shall rule over all the earth. What kingdom would this be? Well, this is also predicted in Daniel here. And if you take a look at Daniel chapter 8, we're, we're going to come back to Daniel chapter 2. But if you look at Daniel chapter 8, starting verse 20, it says, The ram which you saw having the two horns, they are the kings of Media and Persia, and the male goat is the kingdom of Greece. The large horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Well, we'll just stop right there because the Bible is predicting what kingdoms are coming up in the world power at this time. So Babylon was the kingdom that was in power at the time of Daniel. But he's predicting that the Medes and the Persians, which we just saw, was going to be the next world power that overthrew Babylon. And then Greece would come along and overthrow Media and Persia. And if you look at the history books, this is what happened. And there was a very famous ruler from Greece that came along and did this. And his name was Alexander the Great. Well, Alexander the Great fulfilled this. And if you read some other parts of Daniel... And you'll find out that it even predicts how Alexander would, the Great would come along and his kingdom would be divided into four parts. And that's exactly what happened. Alexander the Great died at a young age and his kingdom was divided into four parts, just like the Bible predicted. And this is amazing things that are written here in Daniel. So let's go back to Daniel chapter 2. We're looking at verse 37, 38, and 39. And now we're on verse 40. 
And it says, And the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron, and as much as iron breaks in pieces and shatters everything. And like iron that crushes, that kingdom will break in pieces and crush all the others. What kingdom would that be? You might guess it's Rome. And Rome is the right answer. Rome is the nation that would come, the kingdom that would come, and they destroyed everything in their path. Just like it's saying here in verse 40. They were as strong as iron, even though it's a cheaper material, it's very powerful metal. And it, dev- it destroyed so much in its path. And the Bible predicted it was going to be Rome. If you take a look at Daniel chapter 9, and we're going over to Daniel chapter 9, and we're going to take a look at verse 27. So Daniel chapter 9, verse 20, I'm sorry, verse 26. And it says, And after 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with the flood until the end of the war. Desolations are determined. Now, it talks about how the Messiah would, shall be cut off. The Messiah is Jesus. Je- that's what Jesus the Christ, that could be called Jesus the Messiah. Jesus shall be cut off. That means he would be crucified. And we're not going to get into that in this Bible study, but Daniel was predicting that the Messiah, the Christ, who is Jesus, would be cut off, and but not for himself and the people of the prince who is to come. Who was the people of the prince at this time when the Messiah would be cut off? It was Rome. Rome was the one in charge. If you remember, Pilate was the one that judged Jesus right before his crucifixion, and Pilate was assigned by the Romans. Uh, so the Romans were the next world power, and that's exactly, let's going back to Daniel chapter 2, verse 40, it's exactly what it's talking about. Rome would be so powerful, it would destroy everything in its path, And then it would actually divide into two separate kingdoms. And that happened about three or four hundred years after Jesus. It split into the Western and the Eastern kingdoms. But we're going to go down to verse 42. The toes and the feet were partly of iron and partly of clay. So you can see it's becoming weaker and weaker. And it's going to be crushed by a, a rock that's cut out with no hands. This is a symbol of Jesus. It's predicting Jesus is going to come and crush the world powers. And that hasn't happened yet. This is going to happen at the second coming. Jesus is going to come back, set up a kingdom, and it will never be destroyed. And that's what it says in verse 44. It says, And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. This is talking about the second coming of Jesus, and Jesus will come back as King of kings, Lord and Lord of lords. And then it says that this dream will be sure in verse 45. And then we can just see in verse 46 and 47 that Nebuchadnezzar was impressed that because it's exactly what he dreamed. And Daniel says in verse 47, the king answered Daniel and said, Truly your God is the God of God, the Lord of kings, and the revealer of secrets, since you could reveal the secret. So we see that Daniel predicted exactly what would happen. And it's not because Daniel knew it. God knew it. And God knows it because he knows everything that's going to happen. He doesn't make you do stuff, but he knows exactly what's going to happen to you. And he can predict uh, things that are going to happen in the world. And that's what some of the Bible is about. It's prophecy. And it's prophecy that's true. So thank you for checking out my Bible study. I hope you join me for other Bible studies. Check out my other ones. There's many on YouTube. Click subscribe. Tell your friends and family. And thank you.